So after that August um, RC event, um, we managed actually managed to have two more in September and uh, and November. I didn't bring the the Chronos at that time. It was still stuck in that box. I didn't have time to put it together, and um, I kind of thought I was missing parts uh, in in order to put it together the way I wanted it to. But now a couple of months later, I have. Uh, I thought it was it's it's time to put it together now when when the the real V2s are are being released. The changes I have done are I've added a 7075 um, optional brace for the rear because I need to stiffen up the rear somehow in order to take the flex out of it. In order to get the flex out of the front it would be kind of easy just to buy the 7075 braces for it and uh, just fit those but I would have to buy the bottom one and the top one in order to make it stronger and in my opinion it doesn't really make sense to have strong braces but still have a top steering plate in, uh, in, in plastic or composite so and also buying the braces uh, well they cost money so what I've done is I, uh, I made a, a brace like this years ago it's uh, TP Parts Extreme um, he made a, a video about this on his uh, YouTube channel and I made one of these years ago and I fitted it to a Tallium V3 and while the the tower to tower braces might not be for everyone or everybody everyone doesn't like him it's been working out great for me it's actually a, a 15 by 15 millimeter square aluminum tube that I've used and uh, it's bolted with an M4 that runs all the way through so it actually bolts the front and, and rear tower together and, and, and makes it a lot stiffer that way so cost for this aluminum square tube and everything was like five euros and uh, and I kind of like homemade stuff that way so this tower to tower brace has added a lot of stiffness uh, and uh, will hopefully prevent from when when it lands or when I land badly or something like that it's uh, it's gonna keep the the chassis and the drive line and everything straight. Well, talking earlier about this, what I think is the weak point in the front for the arms. Corelli has for the V2s. They have released a um, an aluminum plate that that sits right there and uh, kind of strengthens up the top steering plate for the upper hinge pins. This was a nice thing to release, but I, I, I found it a bit flimsy. So when you attach it, it's kind of didn't sit tight or anything. So what I did was I designed uh, another one that went all the way around instead, and also it's it's supposed to be threaded with uh, M4 threads so that I, I can use the hinge pins from my Arma 6s. And I think that's going to work out uh, real well. Also, uh, what I've done is uh, the Acumen. I bent the, a few of these Acumen steering plates, and uh, the new one that I'm going to make is uh, is four millimeters thick instead. I do know that the uh, Corelli has released an updated version of this, but still, I think it's fun to to design and 3D print stuff and. Uh, I'm going to try it out my way first. If I flip this around, what I've done is also I have uh, drawn up the hinge pin inserts and uh, I'm going to cut these out of uh, a stronger metal or a stronger material than, um, than aluminum. And I think that's going to work out uh, really nice. What I would really like is to uh, to be able to fit a, uh, a front lower hinge pin holder, this is gonna this is gonna be the the front rear one. And actually, what some other RTRs have is 
they have this piece when when the truck comes down this puts a lot of force on the front diff housing and front diff casing so they actually have this one bolted down so the hinge pins enter here but this piece is bol also bolted down to the chassis which makes this uh, really strong or this uh, part of it really strong just before the, the kick up now somehow Tim Corelli didn't design it that way if I if I bring this chassis out again you can see the the difference right there if I put them side by side these are the steering posts so if you look at this other chassis the steering posts are way back here with which leaves room for this piece to be bolted down right here you couldn't really do that because it it wouldn't be in the way of the steering and everything is so tight up front and, and that's why everything is is really being close to the diff housing and that's why the Ackerman is is designed very very slim as well so that's um, a thing that I would would have wanted to see in the in the in the v2s but that that not, that hasn't happened yet so So what I've done is, uh, like I said, these are going to be cut out of uh, stronger metal and, and hopefully that will stiffen up the, the front uh, a bit right there without them being able to move. And then I'll see what I'm going to do in the future right here to, to strengthen this part of the chassis. Um, the, rear, the rear part right here is going to be real strong like now, kind of like overkill I think. I've been using the M3 plate earlier but right now along with the 7075 brace I'm gonna and, and this piece that I'm gonna cut out of titanium this rear section is gonna be really strong and uh, so back to the the tower to tower that that's gonna keep that uh, front section a bit sturdier and it's gonna take help from the sturdy rear end actually that that's my my plan anyway uh, so on the v2s there's uh, there's also some some other great improvements or and uh, that is the they finally released uh, new spur gears and uh, they released the 50 and they released the 52 now the 52 um, it's going to uh, do a great thing I, I believe it's uh, it's going to of course change the, the total gear ratio which leaves me with better options for using the pinions and it's going to leave me with better options for running it on on 6s and uh, how they manage to fit a 52 right there is they also released spacers they released a new motor mount and they released spacers that sits underneath the front diff mount uh, I tried it that way but uh, what happens is that the angles of the of the front and rear dog bones are really ending up in a really more strange angle than what they already are so what I've done on mine is that I I cut out the little slot right there for for the spur gear to, to sit as low as possible and uh, I'm just using one millimeter spacers instead of four under under the the front diff mount and uh, I also kept the original motor mount version one motor, motor mount and I stuck one millimeter on of spacers on there of course as well I also added the the new uh, top diff plate and uh, that's a lot sturdier than the, the version one so I really think that uh, this is this is gonna hold up now and, and this is gonna be Kind of like my, uh, after I cut out these parts in, in outer metal, it's probably going to be titanium. It's, uh, it's going to basically be my, my last version 
of the Kronos uh, V1 with with a bunch of V2 parts on it, and it's really close to uh, to uh, being a V2 actually. I, I don't really see the the need to uh, to buy a V2. Instead, I'm going to wait for the for Corelli for him to release all the models, and uh, it's really exciting. So. Checking out the uh, other V2 things they have done is uh, they, of course, they released really nice skid plates right here, and uh, they're made of out of composite, so it, they don't really add a lot of strength to the chassis that way. But they do offer a lot of protection, and the same with the front. Uh, they designed them pretty nice to grab a hold a bit of the hinge pins holders and stuff like that but but still um, what I wanted to see was that the skid plate would also act as a as a bumper I mean they have a tiny little bumper that uh, just like the stock V1 but uh, for my type of driving and uh, and jumping and stuff like that I I really look do like the the RPM uh, bumper and uh, so I'm gonna reinstall that on there and uh, it offers a lot of uh, protection uh, from direct impacts to the front and even when you land uh, in a slight angle it's also gonna protect the chocks and arms and all that so I'm gonna keep that so all in all while uh, while I conclude this um, this review or uh, and and I, I really appreciate if you've been watching all these uh, all these minutes of me rambling and and talking about this stuff um, so it's been uh, really fun to be a part of this uh, team Corali basher scene and uh, being part of the of the Facebook group the Facebook group is, uh, of course, known today, as most of you know, as Team Corelli Bashers, a group that has um, grown up to 800 members. It's been, uh, like I said, it's been it's been really fun, and I guess we're all have tried to be helpful. And uh, Pat Erbeg has has put a lot of time into this. The uh, at times it, it got a bit too much for him, I guess. So we added a, a few moderators. So uh, it's uh, Marcus Philip uh, joined uh, and uh, also Alan Stocks from Australia and uh, Sean Carlyle from the US uh, really nice guys all of them so it, it, like I said even if the the group has I, be, I really believe the group has made some some impact on the decisions and, and, and changes that Team Corelli has done to the Basher line and uh, even if we just played a, a small part uh, at least we we played uh, uh, we played a part and uh, trying to help uh, new owners and uh, people that had problems with them and um, so so that, that's been that's been that's been really great uh, from my point of view, Team Corelli has listened uh, really well to the users and has responded well to the users and uh, done a lot of changes that people are asking for, people had problems with. Some parts, um, they, ju don't, they just don't want to change at all. They, they won't budge on their decisions to to have it designed a certain way or and uh, but we'll see what happens in the future right now we're we're in the midst of uh, Tim Corelli releasing a, a bunch of uh, a new cars or actually variations of of the same cars we have a, a short chassis and we have a, a long chassis version we have different length arms and a bit different axles and stuff like that but Basically, we're, we're gonna see a lot of uh, um, new cars, uh, and I believe that it's a really smart move of Team Corelli to to make it that way because 
people when they buy an RC car they might not necessarily lift the the, the body and, 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 and check everything out. They they kind of they see the wheels and the tires and they see the body and they well that's the one I'm gonna get because I, I really like that one. And uh, with Team Corelli releasing a, a bunch of different variations of these cars, there's going to be a, a car for everyone or a, a car that somebody likes. So that, that's uh, I guess that's smart marketing or something. And uh, then after that, we'll we'll see what happens uh, if they're going to release. Uh, what I would like to see really is when they're done with this Team Corelli Bashers lineup uh, and I believe it's gonna be like nine cars total I uh, I would like to see Team Corelli take all this knowledge and all this development and designing that I have done and uh, develop a, a new Basher from from scratch that really um, that really, that really, that really doesn't remind me of a bunch of other cars that, with with the electronics and everything moved up front and off to the side, I would like him to put a bit more center and uh, take this part of the truck and make the chassis a little bit wider and the side guards. Uh, don't make it as wide as we have here they could easily take the measurement from here to here and and take it down a notch and uh, it could probably be about two or three centimeters skinnier right here and it would still leave enough room for everything uh, just that the, the radio box and servo holder has to be re redesigned somehow but there's a lot of space right here by the by the battery and there's a lot of space by the motor as well it's just the only thing that's in the way is the radio box wheel and that way the truck or the trucks could be made skinnier and that way it would leave with more body options and stuff I guess also I'm not using the the rear braces right here since I have the stiffener plate and everything underneath but what I also done here is I added some adjustable body mounts uh, and these are from uh, from Norma as well and they also have adjustable body mounts up front and that along with the skinnier stance right here it would leave me at least me they like to model stuff uh, with more body options so that would be a, a thing that I would like to see and also by by taking the the center diff and the motor and moving it back about 10 or 15 millimeters that would leave enough room for the steering post to be moved back and it can also make the acumen and uh, everything a bit stronger because there's more room for it. Also by moving the center diff more center it wouldn't leave me with such a uh, such strange angles right here on the on the dog bones. And last by moving it by moving it uh, 10 to 50 millimeters back the, the rear dog bone wouldn't have to be as long as it is right now so those are the changes that that, that I would like to see basically make it a, a 2021 e e electric uh, design instead of what this kind of reminds me of is like an an old nitro layout with everything being moved off to the right and uh, which would leave room for a uh, for a nitro engine sitting right here. So uh, I, I I can't really explain why they did it that way, or was it because of balance or something else? I I have no idea really. I'm just uh, talking like an amateur here. So 
Anyway, it's going to be a, a really exciting 2021 and uh, since I'm in Sweden, I'm in the middle of winter, it's, uh, it's rain, snow, cold, rain, snow, cold. So the basher season is kind of off for a little bit, at least, at least for most of us. And um, so I'm really looking forward to 2021 and I'm also looking forward for Corelli to to release the whole lineup and uh, and then I'll see if I if I buy another one. I'm uh, already I'm uh, I'm a little bit longing for the for the, the yellowish one uh, top left right there on the shelf. So that's uh, I think that's going to be really nice and and also like I I uh, talked about earlier was the the wheels and tires they have um, released what I believe will be the same size as this but uh, a totally different uh, tire and rim for uh, that sits on the Jambo uh, that's gonna be rise, really nice and uh, like I said I'm gonna buy uh, a couple of pairs of those as well so uh, a really uh, nice uh, exciting uh, future and uh, while there's a bunch of brands out there and uh, there's so many cars in the RC scene right now. I can't. I can't even count them all. Uh, I believe the the more the merrier, right? So, thank you.